Yes, sir. Are uh, you available for a group ride today about 4.30? <laughs> That's going to be very difficult, <laughs> especially, especially because since, uh, since 1999, I didn't ride my bike anymore, so. <laughs> so I got a chance about printing you, maybe. No, but I guess, well, in all decency, I mean, I, I don't know, you're so approachable at all these races. Anybody can come up to you, get an autograph, talk to you, in any state or any country, and I find that amazing. But what, what are the three or four traits that all your riders seem to have that put them above other riders? We'll like repeat the question. Three or four traits that your riders have that make, make them uh, stand out from other riders. Um, well, I think, you know, the, the riders we had on our team uh, at Postal and Discovery, uh, we have selected them for certain reasons. And first of all, because they were good riders and they, they had what we needed uh, to support Lance and also to win some other races because it was not only about Lance and the Tour. We won the Giro and we won the Vuelta and we won a lot of other races. Um, but the main quality was always they had to be able to fit into our philosophy and in our strategies and our way of thinking about the team. Uh, and the first, uh, the first quality is you have to be a team player no matter what. And, and no matter how big of a champion you are, you, know, you have to know that cycling is a team sport and, uh, and that they cannot do it without the teammates. And they have to be able to acknowledge those teammates and to, and to thank them but also in certain moments, including Lance, they had to be able to work for other riders. And, uh, and that's what happened. And it was something which was, which was very important. Um, because um, in Lance's case, for example, he was, and he was smart enough about that to, to, uh, to really support uh, George sometimes in the classics and, and other riders in the Tour of Georgia and, and in the Dauphiné even. Uh, riding for other riders and he knew that he, because he needed those guys in July and he knew they were going to do their job but if he gave something already it's like they they owed him <laughs> and they instead of giving it 100% they gave it 110% and that's that's ultimately I think what uh, what makes a strong team it, if it's a group of, of not only professionals but friends uh, who would basically do whatever it takes to help each other um, and that goes, you know, you, you have to, when you, when you select riders to get on your team, you have to be able to, to get a lot of background on them and know where they come from. And, and, and it, it's not a decision which, which happens overnight by, by seeing the results and, and offering them a contract. There's a lot of discussions going back and forwards and sometimes the process of hiring a, a rider can take years before he gets to the team. Yes, sir. And then what stage but it was probably a week before the end of the tour and and Lance took the stage yeah, okay. how big of a day was that to win the tour that year I mean that to me felt like that was the, the end of the tour that day uh, I think the tour was over already before that <laughs> because I think Lance had a, had a big advantage or he had three or four minutes but uh, it was a very special day um, first of all because uh, I, and I remember it very well it was, uh, it was the stage into Le Grand Bornand and uh, the, the climb you're, you're saying was, uh, um, I forgot the name about that climb now, but anyway, it's, it, was, it was a climb just before Le Grand Bornand and, and Floyd was, was setting the pace. And um, I, I had thought about something very special to motivate him because uh, we, we had been in negotiations before the tour to keep Floyd on the team, but, uh, but Floyd felt like he, he needed uh, some freedom and he had decided already to go to another team, which, which I respected and I understood in those days. Um, but he didn't decide yet to which team, or at least his contract was not finished yet. The, he didn't finish the negotiations for that new team. And, uh, and I, I, I thought during the race, I said, I'm gonna try to figure out something to make him go faster. And, I, and each time Floyd was setting the pace and he was like in this, in this zone uh, I've never seen him go so fast on a climb, and, and even Lance was in trouble, uh, sitting, in his, sitting on his wheel. And um, each time a guy got dropped when Floyd was, was pushing, I said, okay, Floyd, this is another $20,000 for your contract. <laughs> <laughs> and he just went faster and faster and faster. <laughs> but it was, it, was, it, was a nice, it was a nice day because uh, at the end, uh, I mean, Lance absolutely wanted to give that stage to a teammate and it didn't work out uh, and ultimately he could win it himself so it was it was a very nice day absolutely yes sir in yellow 
Um, in this year's tour, especially on verses with Phil and Paul, the, the message is very clear um, about, especially with Garmin Chipotle and Columbia, <laughs> and what they're doing on, on anti-doping. And it's, it's a wonderful breath of fresh air. Yesterday, Beltron got, got nailed. Um, and obviously, with, with your team uh, sitting out the tour this year, is there any way that you're going to present kind of benchmarking standards to the Cycling Federation and the world of what, I mean, obviously you run a very tight ship and have in the past, but do you think you need to go above and beyond for next year's tour to just, just basically say, this is what we're doing to prevent any of that coming in so the world feels a little bit better? Not, I'm not insinuating anything, yeah. but it's just kind of the state nature of the beast right now. Yeah, well, I think, you know, the, the, what happened yesterday with Beltran is very unfortunate, and I think it's definitely not uh, what's happening in the sport. Um, and you know, he's, Beltran is a guy, he's 37, so I don't really understand what he was thinking. Um, but uh, as you say, you know, it's, it's, uh, the two American teams are running a, a very special program, and we are, we are also in CSC. I think these four teams have, a, within, within all, the, all the professional teams, we have a special program, an internal anti-doping system. Um, and that's, I don't think there's really anything else we can do, you know. Um, I know, first of all, how hard it is on our riders. Uh, we, have, we have the biological passport in place, which is, which is very hard on everybody in terms of the privacy and, and you know, the amount of testing there is. Uh, and on top of that, we spent, um, I think in dollars, it's about, it's about $700,000 per year on this internal anti-doping system, uh, which, is, which is a big amount of money, uh, but it's a very intense program. And, and I, I see riders from our team, they had, and for no reason, just random, they had more than 20 tests this year already, out of competition. Uh, so just imagine that, you know, everybody, they have, to, they have to inform all the different governing bodies, and there's about five or six of them, which, is, which starts to be more and more complicated, three months in advance, where they are every single moment of the, of the year, uh, and uh, it's ba they basically they have no privacy anymore, you know, and um, there's, for, we have a guy on our team, he has, he has a family and he has three children, and just imagine if on a Saturday he decides that on a Sunday he goes with his family to the zoo, <laughs> he has to report that, even if it's only, if it's, even if it's only three, day, three hours missing from his house, because in those three hours they can come and test him. Um, and I think it's, there's nothing else right now that cycling can do. Uh, and I think ultimately it's, it's, about, it's about time. Uh, obviously, the older generation, and, and I think Beltran is one of them, is going away. And uh, the new mentality is definitely different. And I think that the last two years have been, have been a wake-up call for everybody in the sport, and, but especially for the riders, because there was, there was a moment where sponsors were leaving and no new sponsors were coming in. And at the beginning of this year, there was, uh, from all the, there's, there's 18 top level teams right now, and five of them had no sponsor for next year, wow. which means uh, potentially 150 jobs less. And, you know, if I'm a rider and I'm thinking, well, I can be one of those 150, it's pretty easy to be in those 150. Um, and now we have seen that, uh, you know, there's been, I don't think there's been any scandals. I, I wouldn't say that, that the case of Beltran yesterday is a scandal. It's a positive case and it's unfortunate that it's in the tour and it's magnified, you know, but there's other positive cases in any sports and, and, and it's a little, little thing in the newspaper. Um, but you know, the good thing is that new companies come in again. And uh, we've seen it with Garmin and we've seen it with, with Columbia and, and CSC found a replacement. Uh, Quickstep have renewed the three, a three year deal. So it's, it's, it, I think it's, the sign that these companies see that cycling is an interesting sport, it's a beautiful sport because I think ultimately they all, they all love the sport, all these sponsors. And that the, the negative impact of the, all those drug scandals are, are, are disappearing bit by bit. Uh, but you know, you, ca you, cannot, you cannot clean the house uh, overnight, it's, it, it's going to take some time. But it's definitely happening, I feel confident.